Hello, and welcome to Southampton City Art Gallery. I'm Jo Bresloff, and I'm part of the learning team. And I organise the Touch Tools for Vision Impaired People, where we explore the collection and visiting exhibitions through touch wherever possible, discussion and description. And I'm standing at the top of the stairs uh, by the service desk, and behind me is a wonderful painting by the artist John Hitchens from this exhibition that we're going to explore called Aspects of Landscape. This very large recent painting, entitled From Sombre Lands Orchestral, is a grand and striking abstract artwork revealing many different aspects of landscape, which glows in the spotlights like a rich, colourful tapestry. Painted in 2016, it is the painting which both introduces and connects the retrospective and chronological routes through the exhibition, which is displayed in all five rooms of the east wing of the gallery. At the end of the tour, I will return to this painting to describe in more detail this piece which combines both early and more recent styles of working and encapsulates Hitchens' lifelong journey of painting landscape. Aspects of Landscape showcases 60 years of John Hitchens' artistic practice and focuses on his personal interpretation and celebration of the landscape of the South Downs. West Sussex is a part of the world that he knows intimately, having lived and painted there all his life, a place he loves for all its variety of chalk downland, heathland, varied field soil, different types of woodland, rivers and stream valleys and coastal scenery. Hitchens' work has evolved slowly and consistently over the years, forever seeking new ways of interpreting the landscape and developing his own visual language to describe it. He wrote, Landscape is the original source of my paintings. This is translated through motifs that represent field and furrow, harvest and plough, river and trackway, fence and farm. For this tour, I have chosen four paintings from the exhibition which highlight these particular features of landscape. Described in chronological order, the paintings also chart John Hitchens' transition from realism to abstraction. Fence and Farm South Downs Blue Hill, painted in 1964 with oils on canvas, is displayed in Gallery 4, a small room showing a series of early landscapes from the 1960s to 70s, featuring open spaces, hills, the sea and cloud formations. Almost a metre wide by half a metre high, it is a descriptive and sparsely painted view of the South Downs, close to John Hitchens' Sussex studio. The painting portrays a dark blue hill in the distance, within a wide undulating landscape with fields and the suggestion of trees beneath a large sky of billowing grey clouds. The large sky fills over half of the painting with its varying shades of grey. Swift, painterly overlapping brushstrokes imply that darker clouds are rolling in quickly from the west, enveloping the lighter clouds and the hint of blue sky to the east. The dark slate clouds appear to touch the brow of the almost central hill casting it in shadow, and a haze of blue-grey paint suggests that there may be rain upon the hill. Beneath the cool purple tones of the hill in the middle distance, thin hor horizontal olive-green lines reach part way from the left across the landscape resembling fields and vegetation. These lines are populated by three light brown dab tree shapes, and to the right there is a darker brown hedge or fenced enclosure. A short creamy white textured stroke suggests chalky soil and creates an air of calm and light in the foreground contrasting with the darker distant tones. The composition is beautifully balanced by one final warm brown line which rises up halfway along the lower edge of the canvas. Fully charged with one gestural sweep it travels towards the right corner of the painting, where it fades, leaving traces of the textured white canvas below. South Downs Blue Hill. 
was painted outside. It beautifully captures the impression and atmosphere of fleeting changes of light and colour of the rural farmed South Downs landscape. In the next room, Gallery 3, the Far Wood series, painted in the 1970s and 1980s, reveals that he later dispensed with skylines and cloud formations and developed even freer brushstrokes, intensifying the light and darker areas and spaces of colour in woodland. Field and Furrow Field interweave in Gallery 3, the longest and largest room in the exhibition, is a wavy edged irregular shaped canvas painted in 2009 with acrylics and which is approximately two metres wide by one metre high. It portrays a structured and pattern design of largely horizontal parallel lines and stripes in rich natural earth colours. The painting resembles a large boulder shaped field enclosure outlined by a dark brown frame onto which it is mounted that echoes and accentuates the irregular undulating relief shape. The intricately painted thin lines in natural soil colours, peat black, burnt brown umber, light brown sienna, yellow ochre, chalk white and rich terracotta red, represent the man-made horizontal ploughed and furrowed lines of the surrounding fields close to his studio at Greenleaves. This naturally coloured patchwork of lines reflects the different soil types found in the South Downs and creates a highly patterned two-dimensional interpretation of landscape. Hitchin's wife Rosalind is a weaver and the bands and weft stripes of natural dye colours in hand-woven rugs together with the influence of land art and sculptural forms, inspired John Hitchens to create irregular shaped and layered canvases using a restricted palette. Emma's Field, the neighbouring painting, also irregular in shape, shows large bands of rich natural colours in a rectangular patchwork arrangement, like a collection of hand-woven and naturally dyed rugs hung together on a white wall. In the 1990s, Hitchens changed his practice from painting in the landscape to working as a studio-based artist, constantly shifting and assembling natural, found and created objects into a living installation for inspiration, including his wife's weavings. This detailed and two-dimensional approach to focusing on the surface of the land translating the ploughed field markings into a patchwork of lines and stripes of earthy soil colours is intensified by the textured surface of the painting. A porridge-like priming base of PVA mixed with sieve sawdust has been applied to the canvas which when painted resembles the uneven and tactile quality of soil and etched ploughed lines. Field interweave marks an experimental period of change, from looking across and through the three-dimensional landscape to focusing on essential elements like field and furrow and the two-dimensional pattern surface of the ploughed landscape. Harvest and plough. In Gallery 1, a very large two-part rectangular canvas entitled Layered Land, painted in 2002 in oils, measuring 230 centimetres by 160 centimetres, is part of the departure series of recent paintings which fills the walls in this spacious room. Executed in a restricted palette of dark, rich earth tones, this is an abstractive view of a magnified section of rock strata with undulating lines of layered soil formations. It also resembles a large scaled ordnance survey map charting the detailed man-made traces and natural marks on the land surface. The monumental scale and freer interpretation encourage a more detailed and intimate survey of the landscape. 
the textured ploughed lines in field interweave, roam and weave all over the surface and are punctuated by dots, circles, concentric circles and undulating contour lines. The white dots represent paths, tracks and post holes. The concentric contours resemble hills, boundary hedges and circular enclosures, some of which contain spotted yellow ochre dots of harvested crops. The large black foreboding sections relate to stubble burning common until the 1980s. Towards the top and part way along one of the undulating, undulating strata lines on the right canvas, there is a small but distinctive bright red pyramid shaped triangle. A reference to a cottage roof seen across the fields from his studio and often depicted in earlier paintings. This new language of mapping and charting the wide expanse of the landscape was inspired by flying low over the fields of the South Downs and photographing the aerial perspective, condensing the landscape into a two-dimensional abstracted composition. Layered land is a landscape remembered and reimagined using carefully placed motifs made up from dots, circles, lines and patterns. Similar harvest and plough patterns, field shapes and natural dye colours have been painted onto a cluster of tall freestanding tree trunk sculptures of varying heights which inhabit the middle of the first room. Pine, silver birch and macrocarpa logs have been partially sliced, uprighted and painted to form wood blades which echo the fields, crops and pathways in layered land. River and Trackway After leaving the East Wing and returning to the main hall, the painting on the wall, which was considered at the beginning of this tour, from Sombra Land's orchestral, also concludes this chronological route through the exhibition. It is a very large abstract painting, in oils on a rectangular canvas, measuring approximately two metres high by three and a half metres wide. Painted in 2016, it is a striking image with its hopeful shift from darkness towards the light. Patches of deep, sombre earth tones mixed with dark blues and violet in the bottom left-hand corner of the painting give way and rise to more structured patchwork ploughed fields in warmer browns, yellow ochre, terracotta red and white dotted chalky enclosures and trackways towards the top right of the canvas. In a truly orchestral palette, the undulating landmass is heightened by great shafts of painterly light and vivid colours. There are bands of ultramarine and pale blue, turquoise, lilac and teal, which resemble sky, clouds, flowing rivers, reflections and the open sea. Furthermore, rose pink, lemon yellow and orange stripes evoke sunsets and sunrises, and summer flowers. It swirls with styles and colours, the early painterly fluid style of capturing views with light and colour, as in South Down's Blue Hill, as well as the earthy patterned aerial perspective of field interweave. But there is also the third dimension of delving deep down into the rock strata and the soil formations of layered land. This complex, multi-layered landscape painting echoes the deep sonorous tones and contrasting high-pitched notes of the musical composition with the same title from Sombra Land's Orchestral, created by the American composer Peter Dayton, with whom John Hitchens has an ongoing collaboration. Listening to music is an important part of Hitchens' creative process. The musicality of line and form reveals itself in the spaces and resonances between elements, in the connections as well as the rhythms. From Sombra Land's orchestral reveals forms, shapes, patterns and colours found in the landscape of the South Downs, the original source of John Hitchens' paintings. The sources remain, but the paintings themselves are the reason for the journey.
I do hope that you'll be able to visit Southampton City Art Gallery once it reopens and join a touch tour. A virtual version of the exhibition can be accessed on the Art Gallery website at southamptoncityartgallery.com. Thank you.